Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about creating risers for your decor. These are staple pieces that everybody needs and they come in all shapes and sizes and are so easy to make yourself. So come join me as I create 10 different styles of risers and hopefully inspire you to create some of your own. On this channel, I do crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, and thrift flips. And if that's something that you're interested in, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And as always, if you like what you see in today's video, I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. But let's get started. I always try and pick up these little packs of coasters when I see them on sale. I don't ever pay full price. I wait for them to be on sale, but they make the perfect little risers for tiered trays or even just for like a candle for your countertop or something. So I have these from Hobby Lobby that were from Christmas time. I got them at the after Christmas sales that they had. And I'm just going over it to cover up the wording just with some white chalk paint. However, you can see that that wording, you can still see it there. So if that was to bother you, so what I decide to do here is I'm just using some spackling to go over that to make it all level. If you're going to put something on the top of this and you're never going to see that or it's going to be on a tiered tray, you could probably just leave it. But I'm just showing you a way to get rid of that. So that way, if you decide to do something like this or ever run across those problems, just always kind of think outside Side the box of ways to solve those different little uh, problems that you come across. After that spackling dries, I just go in with my file and I'm just gonna file it off so it's nice and smooth and gives it a good finish and flat finish so that way things won't tip over when they're sitting on it. And I just go in and I paint with that same color of chalk paint over the spackled area. Now, just to show you really quickly, these are a couple of different coasters that I have used in the past to make tiered tray little risers, and they're so cute and so fun and so many different options that you have. For the feet for this little riser, super simple. I'm just using some wooden beads. I just put them on a barbecue skewer and then I am going to tape in between them. That way I can paint the top, the bottom. I can flip that skewer different ways in different directions to get all of the angles and the beads won't run into each other making a big clumpy mess. Since this is not going to get like heavy use or anything, since it is just probably going on a tiered tray or just holding something small on a counter, you can just use hot glue to put those beads on and super simple and you can see how good that looks right there. Even though this riser is small in size, I think it definitely adds a big impact. It really just gives you that fun little element with the little bead of detail on that and just so simple. And this is so easy and honestly something that anybody can do. I encourage you to take a look at your clearance section at your local home decor store or garage sales, yard sales, or even thrift stores at the section where they have their pictures because you'll find silly pictures that maybe you would never put in your home, but they have a great shape to them. And that's exactly what I'm using here. And I have these little candlesticks that I got at Hobby Lobby. If I have a link to them on Amazon, I'll put that down below, but that's going to be the feet here. So I completely intend on painting over that design. I don't really need a girl that's blowing bubble gum uh, picture, but you know, it works for the shape. And honestly, this particular riser is the one I think I use the most in my house. So I just give it a complete coat of white paint, even over the edges there you can see, and then I will paint the feet as well. Obviously, whatever color you're going to want to paint yours, you're going to choose that. I just thought that the neutral white would look really good. And like I say, this ended up being one that I use more often than any of the other risers. I've had this one the longest, but I love this one and I use it all the time. Just make sure when you're painting the feet on this or the legs, whatever you wanna call it, they're so tall I wanna call them legs, but just make sure you get every angle because when this is set up in your home, you will be able to see all sides of those feet. I just love how this one turns out. It went from a silly little picture to something that I use all the time in my home. So again, I just encourage you to think outside the box, look for a shape rather than what the picture is on the front or something like that. What do you guys think of this one? This is just a thrifted vase that I have, and I also have this little treat lid that came from one of the plastic treat containers from Dollar Tree. And I have various sizes of raised dot stickers that also came from Dollar Tree. To decide what size of dot I wanna use, I just place them on each of the little scallops of this little tray, that, well, it's going to be my tray, and I try and decide which size I like better. I ultimately decide to go with the smaller size. Once I put that on there, I can clearly see that that's the size that I want. So I just go through and place all of those on each of the little scallops. 
Now to get this little lid onto my vase here, I'm just using a combination of E6000 as well as hot glue. And then I will just do my best to find center of that lid and place it onto the base there. And then I will just kind of make sure that I have a really good strong bond there to let that uh, hot glue dry. And then I will just leave it to let that E6000 dry. Now I just spray this with a little bit of white spray paint. You can use whatever color you would like. I just make sure to get a really good coat all over it and those cute little raised dots I feel like look so cute uh, and so I'm going to do a little bit of distressing here and I am just using some elephant chalk paint you could do this in whatever color uh, you wanted to if you wanted to use like a stone color or something like that so it wasn't quite as um, definitive or dark I guess as the elephant chalk paint but I really loved how that looks on here so I just go through and make it look really weathered and really aged it makes makes those little dots pop. It makes all the little scallops have a little bit more detail. Again, this step is completely optional, but just to show you what it looks like, I even go through on the top here and give it a little bit of the distressing there as well. I think this little riser turned out so cute. I love to use this in my decorating. I love how those little dots ended up on there. It's just about using your creativity and looking for the shapes of pieces that you would think would make really good riser shapes and putting them together. It's so simple, anybody can do this. For this riser, I just took a little candlestick riser from Dollar Tree and spray painted it. And I had this little wood round that I went ahead and sanded down. And I am going to make what traditionally would be the bottom of it, the top. So I just go over with um, some antiquing wax and I really take my needle nose pliers and distress the heck out of this wood. I wanted it to look really aged and I wanted the base of this to look like jadeite. And so I painted it with some pistachio spray paint and I'll link down below the color that I use so that way you can see that. But again, this is just a riser from Dollar Tree and I'm just using some hot glue here and I just glue this right on like this. And again, I have it so the little beveled edge faces down and I love that. But I think this turns out so cute. It is so spring, it matches my jadeite and it is so simple and easy. What do you guys think of this? For this particular riser, I wanted to do a theme kind of like a cake stand. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. So I am just putting these little wooden half beads into a Ziploc bag with some antiquing wax. And I'm just going, going to kind of like mush them around, judge them around, get them all covered and everything. I do just want to mention that I do use this in my kitchen a lot, but it is not food safe. So you just don't want to put food directly on it. Just lay like a napkin down or some tissue paper down or something like that. Just make sure there's some type of barrier between your food and the cake stand itself. So after I dump these beads out, I just take a baby wipe and kind of wipe the top of them so that way they're not very goopy at all. And I just take this little wooden round that you can find like at Home Depot, Hobby Lobby, uh, somebody told me that Dollar Tree Plus, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, sells these. So just whatever size that you would like. And I'm just using the antiquing wax to go over with a baby wipe and stain this completely on all sides. For the base, I am just using a wooden candlestick and I'm doing a taller one because I did want this to be very high. And so you can get these at your local craft store, you can get them at home decorating stores, thrift stores, wherever, you might even have some just on hand. But I chose one that was a little bit higher because I wanted more of that traditional like cake stand height. So just a little bit higher one, I guess. Anyway, so I just stained this completely to match um, so the base and the top match. And then to put these beads on, I just use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and just work my way around the entire outside portion of this wood round. After I get all those half beads glued on, I do go back over with a little bit of the antiquing wax and a brush just to kind of fill in any areas that it might have gotten rubbed off or didn't cover completely. And that way you don't see any of like the bare wood sticking through. That's up to you if you want to do that or not. I did kind of like the way that it, it worked. I do end up distressing this with some white paint, so I guess it wouldn't entirely matter, but it is just, I'm just pointing out that I did that step. So now I just use wood glue and hot glue to glue that base onto my cake stand there. And then I got, uh, you can see here, I'm gonna take my white paint on a brush and I go around all of those little half beads there and then across the top to give this a very rustic look. 
I love how this looks. I use this all the time in my kitchen. It permanently has a home in my china hutch with various things on it. I don't always use it for food, but it is kind of fun to pull out when we're having get togethers or something to use just kind of to have a different level on our table that I'm serving from. Again, just have a barrier between the wood and your food itself. But definitely let me know what you think of this one. I love the height of this one. It definitely makes this piece and I absolutely love it. Don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. I am loving cutting boards right now and they are all the rage and I found this darling little decorative cutting board at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off so I paid $4 for it. I am not using this for food, it is strictly for decor, uh, decor purposes and I have these cute little finials that I got on Amazon and I will leave a link to those down in my description box but we're going to use these as the feet. So I am staining them with just some antiquing wax so that way they will match the cutting board and depending on what cutting board you pick up or you're trying this with you can paint your feet accordingly to kind of match or stain them both to kind of be the same. So I just took that little leather handle off. I decided that I didn't need that and I'll just use a combination of wood glue and hot glue and use my ruler and I'm just going to space out where I am putting these feet so I can get them kind of as symmetrical as, um, as I can. One of the most common questions I get is about my rulers that I use. Guys, I did pick these up about three or four years ago at TJ Maxx or Home Goods, and I have not seen them since. But if I ever find anything close to this, I will definitely let you guys know and leave a link to them. But I'm just using this to make sure that I get those feet pretty well, like on the same line, and that way um, that, that it's not gonna lean or anything when I place down this cutting board. But look at how absolutely darling this ends up looking with my little decor on here. This is so cute and I mean really it just adds so much of a good element to lift these items up off your original surface. What do you guys think of this one? I wanted to make my own riser that was very farmhouse looking that kind of had like the wooden bead detail and had the iron and also the wood together. So to get that look, I'm just using this little hanging wire basket from Dollar Tree and they are in stock now. I did see them the other day. They have them every spring. And so I'm just using some wire cutters to cut off the round circle on the base. Invest in some good wire cutters would be my advice to you because it, it is pretty hard to cut through, but I mean, you can do it. I just had some like like little teeny wire cutters you can see. And then I just used an embroidery hoop to get that wooden round edge on there. That was kind of just what came to me to think to do that. So if you had a different alternative, you definitely could do that. I just used some hot glue and held each of those little wires in place until it dried before moving on to the next. Now I'm just taking a wood round. This is one of the very thin wood rounds that come in like a pack of three or four. I'll try and put a link in my description box for these but I just take some wooden beads and I kind of did a dry fit with them. And so that way I knew exactly how many it was gonna to take to go around and just hot glued each of those on. And then I'm just taking some antiquing wax and I am just covering all sides of the wood round that will go on the top and then the wood round that will be on the base to glue. Now I stained the inside of this, which technically you wouldn't need to do because it's gonna be glued together. So you would never see that. <laughs> so just keep that in mind when you're doing it. But I do also do the little uh, embroidery hoop to match. I glue it, or not glue it, but I stain it. Now I'm taking glue and I just go around this little circle. I'm gluing it just to this little square to have a better surface to glue onto my wood round, if that makes sense. So I glue it on and put a lot more hot glue, as you saw, and I just let that dry completely before moving on to the next step with that. So as you can see, I just take some glue and go around the edge of this wood round here. And then you just have to work quickly. And then I just pick up the one with all the beads that are glued to it and sandwich that down on top. So you can see the inside of that. Nobody's ever gonna see that. So I didn't necessarily need to stain that. Now I am just going to use a pencil and a ruler to measure out where this square is going to go. And then I just trace it because this is going to be the bottom. No one's gonna see that pencil square. 
but it does give me a really good template on where I need to glue my piece there. So I just use my hot glue and then I am just going to turn that over and place it right inside of that square. And this is what it turns out looking like. I love this. I use this a lot in my staging that I do for my photos on other videos and I get a lot of compliments on this. And I absolutely love this piece. It feels sturdy and I just think it looks so farmhouse. This particular riser can be done with any piece of scrap wood that you may have. If you don't have any scrap wood, they do sell little cute pieces like this at Hobby Lobby. You can see the $3.99. And then I'm just using my heat tool just to kind of scrape that little price tag right off. This will be the bottom of this and it does have this cute little beveled edge on it, but it is a little bit rough. So I just kind of go over it because I don't want to get any slivers and I want my paint to go on fairly smooth over that. So I just smooth that and then wipe it down. Now I am going to be painting this all the same color so I want to make sure that I have the feet on so when I paint it I can paint it all together and I'm just using some wooden beads on this I'm just using a combination of the wood glue and the hot glue to get these beads on for the little feet on our riser tray and I'm just going to I left it sitting overnight the hot glue just helps hold them in place and that wood glue is what it gives it the really strong hold there and then I'm just using kind of a spring green color whatever is speaking to you the day that you make yours is what color you'll want to do I mean there the possibilities are endless I really want to age this though so once I get this completely covered with as many coats as I want I'm taking just a chip brush with some antiquing wax and you can kind of watch how I distress this now I know this may not be to everyone's liking but some people do really like this I just wanted this to look very aged and very weathered so I am just lightly going across with that antiquing wax because I wanted to look like maybe this green paint was just paint that was like chipping away and you could see the wood underneath or maybe it was just really grimy or something but I go around all of the edges and everything with this technique before I pass my brush through again though you do want to make sure that it's dry or it will kind of smear that wax if that makes sense so I'm very careful to kind of not go over the areas I have already done but I'll let you just go ahead and watch and see kind of how I finish distressing this around all of the edges and everything Here is this riser completely staged. What do you guys think of this? I know that that distressing is not everybody's taste, but I am very happy with how it came out. I love it, it's going to be perfect, and I think it looks so cute right here, and I am just loving that color of green. This little riser ends up being so sweet and so cute in the end, and I use this all the time in my decorating. So I'm just taking one of these wood rounds. I bought this in a package of like four or five at the craft store, but I have seen these at Dollar Tree just on their own, and they also come in different shapes, like squares, hearts, ovals. So use whatever you can find or whatever is going to fit your needs. These always come with a little bit of rough edges, so I do sand them down and then wipe it down, but I do take some needle nose pliers and I like to make a very distressed looking piece of wood. So I just kind of go over all of the edges. You can see all of my little indentations that I have made there. And then I'll just take a baby wipe and some antiquing wax to stain this. However, you just wanna make sure that you can kind of see how all of those little divots are showing there, that you'll take some antiquing wax and saturate each of those little areas. You can either do that by like I'm showing here, pouring the antiquing wax right on, or if you saturate your baby wipe, you just kind of will press down and hold it for, you know, 10 seconds or so to make sure that all of that wax goes down into those little indentation marks because it just makes it look extremely aged like it's been around forever. I got this little candle holder at the craft store when it was 50% off, so it was like $2.50. You may already have something in your home that you can use. I just loved the little color and the aging marks of it. And to affix this on there, I can use some E6000, so you can use that for a permanent hold. I actually just did hot glue because I wasn't sure how long I was going to use this. Guys, I've had this for over a year and I use it all the time. It's up all the time diff through different seasons and decorating. That hot glue has held really well, but you definitely can use E6000 for a more permanent hold if you would like. I think this turns out so beautiful. I love it. It literally just puts your items on a pedestal. I think it is so cute. I've used it a lot in tiered tray decorating and in my china hutch. It is so versatile. Let me know what you think of this one down in the comments. 
This is one of my most favorite risers ever. I found this wall hanging at Hobby Lobby and you can see here how it has the little detail to hang on a wall. It was $22. I got it at 50% off, so it was $11, but I, it's absolutely beautiful. And I have these little candle cups that I got at the little wood section there at Hobby Lobby as well, but I'll see if I can leave a link down in my description box to find these on Amazon. But I'm just going to turn this into a riser. I thought it would be so beautiful. So I'm just taking my needle nose pliers there to put inside of my little candle cup. And I'm just going to paint these the same color or as close as I can get to the same color as my actual tray that I'm going to use. And then since the tray itself is distressed, I am going to distress the little feet here so that way it matches and gives it one nice look. I just want to point out that you should always just look for shapes that, of things that you like. And if you think that it'll, I mean, just try it. I mean, I had no idea how this would end up looking, but I love it so much. And I'm just taking some E6000 and some hot glue, and I'm just putting these feet evenly spaced around the base of this on the backside, so that way it will stand up off of the counter. And then as you can see here, I'm just making sure that all of my glue is cleaned up because you don't want to see any of that seeping out anywhere. I thought this piece was absolutely beautiful when I saw it. I just didn't have anywhere in particular in my home that I could think of to hang it. So this way I still get to use it in my home and enjoy its beauty. Here it is all decorated with some decor. Let me know what you guys think of this one. I think this is so high end and it is so simple and it is so awesome to be able to take a piece that you love and be able to convert it into something that will work for your home. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of these simple and easy farmhouse risers. They are so fun to make and once you start making them, you start seeing everything in a different way and looking for different shapes of items. And pretty soon you're wanting to make different risers for all sorts of different rooms in your house and different things. I just love the way that these all look. Did you guys have a favorite one? I have a couple that stand out to me that are my favorite, but honestly, I love them and use them all and I am so excited excited that I get to share with you guys super easy ways on how to make them. So again, let me know down in the comments if you had a favorite. And as always, remember to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. We'll see you next time, guys. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.